Hey, hey, what's up garden and friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, beautiful day, kind of chilly. Got a lot going on for Saturday's video, so I had to make a very narrow space here to film this video, because it, it's just mess everywhere. May have been off more than I can chew. I don't know, we'll see what happens come Saturday's video. Just a quick one here, quick video. I've had a fair amount of questions with people asking me, actually mostly like friends and family <laughs> texting me, a few viewers, but people hit me up asking, what do you do with these bulbs that you buy that are pre-sprouted and then uh, they start to fizzle out and die off? And I thought, you know, that would be a good thing to talk about since a lot of people are buying these things. It's become really common now in the springtime to find pre-sprouted bulbs pretty much everywhere you go. I'm seeing them all over the place. Daffodils, hyacinths, tulips. It's really nice and convenient, isn't it? For those of us who don't get around to plant them in the fall time. But the problem is, what do you do with them when the flowers start to fade and fizzle out, right? Because normally we would go ahead and plant those bulbs in the fall time and then they do their thing and just kind of leave them be, let them die back and that's about it. I mean, they're bulbs. You can add some bulb tone to them or bone meal, something like that when they're done flowering. Some people will take their daffodils and pinch the foliage to help encourage the nutrient reuptake back into the bulb and the dormancy process just it helps accelerate it, I suppose. I've never done it, but I hear people suggest it and say that it works really, really well. Lots of different things we can do with our bulbs. There are really a couple of different ways you could go about handling your bulbs once they're done flowering when you have them in these containers. The first way isn't my favorite, but what you could do is just let them do their thing. Like these hyacinths here, these are going to start to brown out and get more limp. This one right here, that just broke. Labrador tail, got it. And it snapped, but I'm going to leave it. Here's a flower that's a much better example. You can see it's starting to brown out, fizzle out. That's going to die back. Once it's fully died back, sometimes I'll go in and cut them. Some people say to go ahead and leave them. The main thing is you want to go ahead and just allow that to go back and shrivel. But once it's just kind of like a ugly looking shriveled up stick that's all brown, you can cut it off. When it's all brown, it's not doing anything else for the bulb. So you could go ahead and leave those in their container and I would set them someplace where they're not going to get the amount of sun that you would typically want them to get while they're flowering. Go ahead and move them to maybe a part sun location. You want to keep that foliage doing whatever it wants to do. Keep the plant watered just like you normally would and then allow it to have its own dieback process. They should do it on their own without much encouragement. The bulbs are fairly well pre-programmed like that. It's one of the things that's so nice about them, right? And then in the fall time, you can go ahead and take those bulbs and plant them at the depth you would want them to be, whatever is appropriate for whatever type of bulb it is that you're growing. There are a few issues with doing things this way. One of those issues being that if the environment changes for them too much, you could end up just triggering them to grow. <laughs> when you pop them in the ground. You don't really don't want to do that. That's one of the reasons that we don't like take them inside and throw them in a paper bag like you would with something like a caladium during the winter time when you want them to be dormant or just a lot of bulbs, rhizomes that you want to overwinter in the house that don't have active growth on them. You don't really want to change things too much for them because it might trigger them to start growing. So that's why I prefer to leave them outside. Still someplace really dry. Don't forget to hit them with some water every now and then because if these were in the ground there would still be some moisture in there around the bulbs of these plants. Like I mentioned, that's not my favorite way to do things. If I were to just leave these sitting around when they've died back like this, I can guarantee the squirrels are gonna dig right in there and get those bulbs out. What I prefer to do with them, what I think works best, and most gardeners would probably agree with this, go ahead and plant them out where you want them in the garden. Just figure out where you want them to go in the garden, pop them out of their nursery can, and try your best to not disturb those roots too terribly much, and plant them at the level that they're already at in these containers. Even if that's not the right level for the bulb, you know, hyacinths, tulips, daffodils, generally want those a few inches down, and that's rarely the case with the ones that are in the pots. That's not ideal for growing them in pots to get them going, get them going quickly to get them out to the market. Figured I should probably clarify quickly. And here's an airplane and it's starting to rain. Whatever the depth of the soil is in here, see that white down there? You want that to be buried. So that's the planting depth. If things are really root wrapped, you can very gently loosen those up. But that is the level where I'm going to want those planted in the ground. There's a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, but the main thing is that you don't go up too high in there and wherever the lighter whiter parts of the growth is, you want to make sure that that remains covered. The depth can be adjusted if it needs to be adjusted in the fall time. And then 
take your phone, take several pictures of where they are, get some up close, some from far behind, some from down low. So you have a really good idea of where you put those bulbs because during the summer when things get really hot, the foliage on those, that's gonna fizzle out and they're gonna disappear. You go, hey, wait, where were those? And then you have that problem of they weren't planted at the appropriate depth. That's why it's a good idea to go ahead and take those pictures. So you have a good idea of where you put those bulbs so that in the fall time, you can go back in there and get those bulbs down deeper to the appropriate planting depth. And then just fill in the soil and that's it. They should come back the next year. See, doesn't this last way sound much easier than the other way? There's so many risks involved with just leaving them potted up like that. I think it's a lot easier to get them in the ground and just basically leave them be. If you do think that for some reason you have a phosphorus deficiency in your soil, then adding some bone meal, not a terrible idea that'll help encourage some root growth or the bulb tone or any other bulb fertilizer. If you think your soil needs it, then that would not be a bad idea. I keep getting distracted by the dog in the background. He's been really cute today. Oh, and I should have mentioned, you don't have to wait until they're done flowering to go ahead and pop them in the ground. I move bulbs around all the time. It's generally kind of risky because you may end up sacrificing the flowers. I haven't had that be an issue as long as I don't tear the roots up very much on the plant and make sure that the planting depth stays about the same as whatever it's at in those containers. Yeah, that's it. Not a lot to it. Just don't disturb the plant too much. Make sure that the plant has an opportunity to do whatever growing with the foliage it needs to do when it's done flowering and let them have that natural cycle. And then they should be happy. So once you get them down into the appropriate planting depth in the fall time, have some beautiful flowers the next year and you get to go. That's it. Simple. I highly recommend doing things the second way. The first way, eh, eh, it's risky. All right, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. It's always when I'm down to like 15% battery that a really loud airplane shows up. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. As I mentioned with the bulbs, there's just a lot of different ways that we can grow them as far as, well, I shouldn't say there are a lot of different ways we can grow them. Different types of bulbs have different types of needs when it comes to what to do with them after they flower. I think that'd be too much to go over in this video when the overall message is just get them in the ground, don't adjust the depth until the fall time. Everything else is going to be dependent on what type of bulb it is you're growing. How many of y'all do the bend and pinch method with the daffodils? I say, here it's a great thing to do. I just, I've never done it. The daffodils, they're just so easy, right? They just grow and grow and grow. I think that's one of the things I like about them so much is you pop them in the ground and they are around for many, many, many years to come with very little effort needing to be put into them. Hyacinths and tulips, not always the same case, especially tulips. I could rant about tulips for a while. Okay, but I won't. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.